YMT112 algorithm and programming 2. This is the tutorial of chapter 16 databases. Let's go ahead directly and discuss the questions. Write a Java program that creates a student one database. Uh, your program should drop any tables exist in the database. Assuming that uh, we are just creating a new database, there should be no tables. However, because uh, we may try a number of times to run different things, so we will just try to drop the tables and then insert a new one. So next, the program should create a table. So we need to create a table, which is a database in this case. Databases are usually uh, meant uh, to be composed of tables. So we have different types of scenarios of tables. So we have here columns and we have entries for these columns. So each column has its own entries and they determine, each entry determines specific information for some, some item or some object or a person, like in this case, for example. So we speak about students, we expect to have an ID. Usually this ID can be identified as an integer or maybe characters also possible. The name can, can be identified by character because it's a string. The department is a string as well can be identified by series of characters. Uh, the grade point average of GPA can be identified by double in this case, yeah, because we have the decimal points here. So we have these rows and columns to be created. Initially, we will create the columns because they are the unique identifiers here, not unique, they are the identifiers. One of them can be the unique identifier, the primary key. In this case, we can use the ID because the ID shouldn't match actually. A name may match, it's possible, but department may match as well. The um, GPA may match it as well, but the ID should not. Uh, every student should be uniquely identified by an ID. But these identifiers of the columns should be created first. Then uh, we can use one of them like the ID as a primary key. Then we can insert uh, row after another, row after another for all the database. So let's just go ahead and create our program. Now for database, first of all, we need to import um, some instructions or some actually class or package of classes in order for us to run or execute uh, statements. I will explain about these while we are typing. So initially I will have to import java.sql so structured query language, and that's a uh, common uh, language used for database query language. We, we, are, we send a query for uh, uh, retrieving or inserting, updating statements in databases. Okay, so we have already imported the package needed for um, da databases, SQL. So what we need to do, uh, first of all, we need to identify where we would create our database. Now, in order for you to create a database, you can use different types of actually uh, database managers. There are actually uh, different, you can say, um, managers that can be installed for uh, in your PC and used. However, I will just use the default um, manager that we uh, may have, actually we should, not may, we should have with our current net beans or the IDE that we are using, uh, which is the Derby. So I will use it, it's, by, it's available by default. I assume that you have it, otherwise most likely you will not be able to run your uh, net beans because it comes with the JDK that you, you have already installed. So I will create a URL for my database. I'll create, uh, I'll use final, why? Because I'm not going to change uh, this URL for, for this application. I call it database and I'll give it the name URL, database URL. So this uh, database is actually, this is, this is a URL and it's a, st a string. So what we are going to do, we need to specify where my uh, database is supposed to be created. Now, if you remember the uh, Java database, um, connectivity. This is the protocol we use with Java when we create databases. 
specifically here now in NetBeans, we need to use next to that the uh, sub protocol, which uh, management database management you're going to use. I'll use Derby. You could change it, but as I said, because this is this is coming along with the JDK, I don't have to install anything. And my um, folder next to that, or where I'm storing my databases, is in the local host. And I have this is by default. I never changed it since I installed NetBeans. Uh, 1527. Now what I'm going to do is I'll give my um, database a name. So since we are uh, creating database for example one, so I can use example one. However, I have because I created for other, uh, I mean, previous sessions or previous actually semesters, uh, example one, I'm going to use example three. I, I, I'm sure I don't have example three. And what I will do here, now since this uh, database uh, is not available, I'm creating it. So I'm just creating it from scratch. So I will say create. This instruction is true. That means create it. It doesn't exist. You just don't get its uh, URL only. At the same time, create it and get me the URL. Okay. So we have customized our URL. What should we do now to deal with a database? Most likely we will have uh, some exception to be thrown due to some errors. So we need to use try and catch. So try or create try uh, for what? For creating the connectivity. So it's like uh, creating a database, registering it, connecting it uh, so that you can apply some statements or queries to this database. So I will use connection, the keyword connection to create my connection and I can give it the name connect or C, uh, sorry equals. And now I will use the, the driver manager to get the connection. So driver, driver manager class, driver manager dot get connection. The first one, as you see it, then we need to specify the URL. Yeah, it comes by default because it speculates that you're going to use this. It is just, it is just a guess. So now the swearly line here, because we haven't yet used this one, plus uh, we need to report these exceptions. So we need a catch close. Now we will do it. Just hold on. I can do it for now so that uh, we get rid of this swirly line so that we don't get confused. What kind of exception? I, I may get most likely, uh, I may get connection problems or if I'm executing um, SQL statements, then I may get SQL exception. However, in this case, I'll just keep it general because we're not quite sure what kind of exceptions we may come across. So let, let it catch whatever exception may appear. And in this case, I'll just display uh, whatever error, just general error. And I'll say this error is uh, as follows. We explain about um, the exceptions before. I can get the message or the error or the exception, which is being thrown. So for this case, it's done. Now I have already created my connectivity to the database. Now how can I use it? Now, initially, what's requested from us in the question? The question says, if there is any table in this database, drop it. Now you may say, okay, I'm just creating it. I assume there is no table. However, we will run this program a number of times. So we assume that the first time there will be no tables. However, the next time we run, tables will be there or at least one table will be there. So what we would be doing, I, I would just go for creating um, uh, a function, a method to do that for me, drop tables. Okay. And I will pass what the connection. Why I, all I need here is just the connection from, um, the driver manager. So once I get this connection, I can uh, access to my database and apply whatever query I need. Okay. Drop table. And once we've, we're done with drop, dropping 
any table available, all the tables available. So what, what I'm going to do, I need to build tables. So build table. The question is telling us this. Let's just get back to this question. Okay. You see drop any tables exist in the database next, the program should create. So we need to create um, tables. So it has a connection again. Now, once you are done with um, your database connectivity, you should terminate the connectivity. So we use CNN. Oh, sorry, not CNN. CON. CON. Dot close. Okay. So terminating the connectivity in this case. All right. So now I have my database connectivity. I created the database, the first step. I uh, created the connectivity. I created two methods for dropping tables. Actually, we assume that we have only one table in this case, and another one for building a table. I passed the connectivity or the connection in this case, and I terminated the connection. Now I need to get out of the main and create my methods. I just, um, I mean, customize here, drop tables and belt tables, these uh, belt table and drop table and belt table. These methods are user defined. So I'll define them myself, public static. It's a, it's a class method. I have no return and its name is drop table. Uh, what, you can start by, with whatever, I mean, it's not necessarily you start by a drop table. The, the arrangement here is not a problem. So I'm receiving a connection. This type of connection, this is a class type. So it's an instance of connection. And you can give it a name, the name you like. I, I'm, I'm going for connection CONN. It doesn't matter, but uh, just for avoiding the confusion. Now, in this uh, method, I'm going to check if there are tables or not. So I can give a statement like this, um, checking for tables. For available table. Okay. Well, if there, are, if there are tables or if there is any table, in that case, we need to drop them. So what I'm going to do is I will create try and catch. All right, try. So for this uh, try block, what we need to do, we need to drop whatever table is available. I assume that we have only one table, which is student, if student one, I, I give it a name here, student one. If there are other tables, you can apply to other tables. So what we are going to do, we need to create um, before actually, um, dropping these tables, we need to create a statement. Statement is used for applying the queries or whatever SQL instructions we need to apply. Now we have the connection. What can we do with a connection? We can use statement. So we are creating a statement and you give it a name, maybe ST equals to connection dot create statement. So what we are interested in is creating statement here. I have already created a statement, so the statement can uh, get me to SQL instructions. So I need to drop a table. I can use SQL, certain SQL instruction to do that. So what I'm going to do, uh, and this is extremely common with SQL or databases. Now you created your statement, statement dot now execute. So execute will allow you to execute uh, so many, or sometimes we use even execute query. But in this case, I'm using execute to just uh, terminate something. So now look, for execute here, it's general, it accepts a string. So this string will specify what I'm going to uh, do exactly. So what I'm interested in, in dropping table, so we can use the keyword drop, okay? And I'll say drop table, and as, as, a, as sorry, as I said earlier, I assume that I have only one, uh, database student student one now in some cases you may have more than one uh, table you can just repeat the statement for other tables um, this is student student okay all right 
we haven't yet created the cache uh, close, so we need to do that. Now we are dropping this table, student one. If, as I said, if we assume that there are other tables, you can drop all of them, but you need to know their names. Since we are dealing with only one, as, as our question is stating, so I know that the type of the database that I have, if you don't know there are other ways, maybe we'll explain about it later on in another session, how to um, manage, I mean, more than one table or how to inspect the whole database, the availability of tables. Okay, so we drop the table. What we can do is we can uh, give a statement that the table is dropped or is deleted. Let me just remove the can this on a cast file. So uh, I would just say um, student Um, actually, this one, what's the name? Let me check. The database itself is called student. The table itself is called student like this. Okay, I got confused a little bit. I'll, I'll remove this. Change it to student. Okay. So the table itself is called student. With this way, it's just S is just capital. The database, whole database. What's the difference? The database is like a storage. It may have different types of tables, not only one table. So student is a table in this student, capital student one database. All right, so that's the difference. So I'm dropping that table. Then what I'm going to do is I'll just say student uh, table has been dropped dropped. All right. Now let's create our catch close. So what could be the exception here? SQL. Why SQL? Because I'm, I'm just applying an SQL uh, instruction. Connectivity is maintained earlier. We just received it. We created a statement and we try to execute this statement. So what we will do SQL capital exception in our case here. And I can say as ex or as an exception, and then what I will say, I'll display the error if there is any. In this case, actually, what kind of an error we would have? Either there is a table or there is no table. Most likely, we will not have any um, error, so I will not have anything, just leave it empty. All right, uh, I'm done with this drop table, so I need to go to the next method to build a table. So again, public st static is, is a class method. Void, I don't have any return. And the name is build table. Okay. What are we going to receive is a con connection type instance. I give it any name you like. And in this case, we need to create um, the what we need to create here is the table itself, okay? So I will just create my connection inside the try, similar to this, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I will have to insert, uh, create the columns, and then I will have to insert a row by row. So initially what I will do, I just need to get the connection. So I need to get the connection uh, ready. I'll just get into a try, okay? So try. And I get my statement. Again, you can give it any name. This is local here. Equals connection dot uh, create statement as we did earlier. Next to that, I created my uh, statement for query. I can create my table using this statement. So I can execute a string and what type of a string I'm going to execute in this case. So earlier I executed, now look, I executed the string drop table. So drop itself is an instruction instruction in SQL and it understands table also defining one of the tables here or specifying one of the tables. Actually, we don't have any other specifying this specific uh, table student. And in that case, we can execute using this statement directly. Now, 
what I'm going to execute, I need to create a table. So what identifies my table? These columns, right? These identifiers at the top of my uh, table. So these columns identify my table. I need to create them first. So in that case, um, the main idea that we need to do is creating these uh, tables or the header line or the identifiers of the table. And then next to that, we can insert the uh, entries or the rows. All right. So my statement as t dot execute as I did earlier. Okay. And then I have to uh, not, not execute query, execute just. I'll apply a string and this string is a bit tricky now. Uh, you have to pay attention. Now drop will drop a table. Create will create a table. So create table and give it the name will create a table for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will do this. Create. Uh, I receive these questions frequently. I mean, um, sometimes I get these questions about can we use um, lowercase or uppercase? You can use lowercase, but for database, we are actually um, used for using this uppercase instructions. It's like a convention for using SQL. So usually instructions written in SQL, especially these strings fed to execute, uh, are typed in uppercase. So it's just a convention. Okay. Create table. And now what's the name of the table is student. It's not all capital, just student. All right. And what I'm going to do, that's not the end of it. This is just one part. So this is a long string. I will say I have different types of inputs here in this case. Now I'll just put plus here and then move to new line. Now look, create table, all of it must be a string, all of it, but this string is not a, a just a simple string. Why? Because we need to create one column, two, three, four columns. So the string must be composed of these, all these four columns, and we, we need to identify them one by one or type them one by one. So create table is the headline of the instruction. Uh, as I just identified here, I put plus and I concatenate. So I need a new string in this case. And for this new string, what are we going to do? I'll say what, what kind of um, columns they have, ID, name, department, and GPA. So I'll type it the way it is written there, ID first, okay? And then I will say, what type of uh, variable do I have here? Well, you can go for two types, either integer or character. Sometimes for IDs, we have some uh, letter. So I'll just use character. So I'll use char. So it's ID, its name is ID and it is actually of type character. How many fields are, what's its size? Two, four, six, we can go up to 10. I'm sorry, we can go up to 10. So here we can go up to 10. And what I'm going to do, I'll use this table as my primary key. Why primary key? As I said earlier, it identifies your rows uh, uniquely, that means every row or entry in this case will have a unique identification or ID. So what I will do, not null primary key. So I specify the primary key to be used in databases. Primary key is extremely important and we need to uh, pay attention to it while creating our own databases. So I'll go to the next. What's next we have here? Name in our uh, let me open it in our uh, database, then department, then um, GPA. So I'll type it the way it is, capital, name, and then it's also character, string of char characters. And how long will it be? Well, name usually is a bit longer than the identification. We can go to 30, it's possible, 30 characters, right? Now, this is not 
any primary key we have only one primary key in this case and i don't want to have any other key identification i go to a new concatenation the department i'll type it the way it is department the, oh, capital department okay and it's also character so we need to specify its type character department how many uh letters well we will use uh codes for departments like sang uh, for example so maybe 10. then next to that i go to a new field which is um gpa so i have the last field here in this case with which is gpa and this gpa will uh define actually the end of my table so i will use gpa gpa oh sorry gpa and what's this type is double okay double has no field because it's assumed by default uh, its length now what we need to do i need to terminate so for concatenation purpose i need to know exactly how i can concatenate in this case um let's look at this so we have one here we have one here and I, I need to terminate this one okay so i will just for clarity i will go to a new line because i cannot exactly see it i better do this sorry terminate here and terminate here uh i i think okay yeah i think it was fine because here we have one yes here this is one inside the string i concatenate it this is the answer yes okay uh, that now maybe uh, it's it's clear why i go new line because um, there are a lot of parentheses i don't want to miss any otherwise i get stuck somewhere uh, now let's just create the catch close i haven't done yet with the, um, with a try let me just create the catch close and see if there is any error i didn't pay attention to and i will use the sql because we are dealing with sql exceptions okay and i will say it's an exception of uh, query language exception and i will just display some statement that says like i have an error if there is any and this type of error i can get it uh, as a message so this exception get message message okay i'm sorry uh, yeah message okay so now what are we going to have is exactly um so we had our insertion here uh, sorry not insertion creation of the table com components then what we need to do we need to insert so in order for us to insert what we can do is we can create um, the statements my statement is available here so what i'm going to do i need to insert so remember drop drops table create creates table insert inserts a column or an element so i can use my statement dot execute again what we did earlier and then i'll provide not execute query this comes by default unfortunately so here i'll execute a new string the string is an insertion of a row so we have all these columns now we have created these columns i can insert like this based on these names so the first one uh 20 462 of that saying okay so let's try to do it it's a statement i have to encapsulate it by quotations so insert and now into because you have to specify where you are inserting we may have more than one table so i have a table called student okay and i will say values 
why because i don't insert only one value i may do that but for this case i'm inserting more than one value i will start opening braces uh, sorry parentheses why because i will insert a number of okay so as we did earlier i concatenate it's a string i need to concatenate it and take care of the sequence so initially we need to insert id uh, then name then department then uh, gpa so let's insert them these are strings but we have to identify these strings i have to enclose by co single quotes inside here initially the id it was 20 for 156 i forgot 56 let me check 56 2 yes 62 uh, no, actually the value doesn't matter it's just um i mean imaginary assumption i i assume that we have here i'm sorry okay so then i need to concatenate again i, go, I better go to a new line so i'm going to insert uh, another string which is the name i'll do the same uh Ada. oh i need to get this one Ada. yes key and terminate add or concatenate this is not an addition it's concatenation the proper statement for it then a new then we have department is also string so sang and a new concatenation finally we have the gpa gpa is numeric it's double so we don't have these small quotes inside uh, it was 3.55 so i will just type it 3.55 now i need to enclose my opened parentheses i have one here i don't want to miss it let me just bring it let me bring this one up here and then i'll create my um i mean the enclosed uh, codes i have one here enclosed uh, sorry closing parentheses this is the first one then i finished with the statement oh i i have quotations here i don't want to make this mistake and i have a termination here okay yeah okay so then i have a termination seems i'm missing something wait let me check oh oh okay yeah sure oh we don't have two here we have only one sure yes so that that was a problem of course this outside why because all of it is a string so we have this one is not concatenated exactly in this case this is just a termination all right so this is for the first one now since this one is um fine it has no problems let me just copy and paste and we modify because we have how many we have uh two three four four so let me uh, memorize this okay Mehdi Kaya. okay all right so let me just paste the second row so we inserted the first row we are inserting the second row insert student values now we change those so the um, identity it was 20 22 uh, 33 I guess yeah 33 yes Kaya. and then it was saying 275 these are values you can uh, modify them the way you like it doesn't matter I'll create another so this is the third row I inserted the third row in this case now what I'm going to do is uh, let me check the third row okay Sarbet Mateen computer engineering 290 okay so we modify this 20 then 44 55 yes uh, if i'm not mistaken my mind is not 
remember it because it numbers here is correct. Okay. Save that. Let's see. And then computer engineering. Also saying, but this is C in this case. Uh, it was 290. All right, the last one. Values, then let me check. Okay, okay, okay. 20, 3, 1, 3, 4, 1, 4. And then the name, Daphne. We looked and also computer engineering. The GPA was 330. All right, so we're done with all these uh, inputs or entries in this case. So inserted these all these rows based on column after column after column. Now we can write a statement. If this one is done successful, successfully, what we can say is, well, uh, we can say student table has been, has been, maybe you can successfully, doesn't matter, has been created. Okay, so this is my exception here, I have it. Now we may get, with, get tr trouble with some exceptions, I'll try to address them if it is needed. Now, let's just uh, run and see how things go initially. Why I'm saying I'll try to address them, I, I want to teach you. I want to show you how things go. Now, initially what we did, we specified our database uh, based on GDBC, and this is the protocol that, that's going to be used. Uh, Java database connectivity and I'm using Derby because it's just by default available with a JDK. Uh, you can install whatever you, um, I mean management that you like in this case or manager and this one is the local host you should know where your uh, Java is installed this may differ by default I think most of you will have the same but I'm not sure if you have changed it or not then I specify the name of my database and I say I would like to create it. Okay, so next to that we have to use the try and catch because it, it, for some reasons uh, an exception may be thrown due to database connectivity or due to the driver manager uh, like this ability of con con connection or creating the connection. So we created two functions, two methods, sorry, for dropping tables if any and building the table and then we closed or terminated the connection or the connectivity. So we did all these things, dropping the table, we assume that we have only one table, if there are others, we could have done the same and then we created our table. How to create table, we use create table, we give it the name and then we specify all uh, the identifiers and make sure to have a primary key somewhere so that uh, you don't get stuck with uh, identification if, if needed okay we inserted a row after another so we use insert and we use values values why because I'm I'm inserting uh, not only one value I'm inserting a whole row which has uh, different values and we did this four times then um, we are actually done let's just try to run now um, it wouldn't run but we will see we will just diagnose the problem now look, error. No suitable driver found for GDBC, JDBC, Derby. So we have a problem with a driver. That means uh, in this project here, look at the side. In this project, I don't have the suitable driver for the Java database connectivity. This Derby is available, yes, but it's not connected here. So what I'm going to do now is extremely important because uh, you may just get stuck somewhere here and you will not be able to run it. Go to libraries here, right click on libraries, okay? And what you need to do, add library, okay? So again, right click on libraries, add library. And now what are we interested in adding 
to database driver. So Java database driver added to your library there. Okay. So we have already added it here. It will take a few seconds to be added. Now, if you expand this one, you will find it. You will see it. So Java database driver is added here with the JDK 1.8 default. So this one includes my jar uh, files and things related to the database that I need to do or I need to work with. And this is the driver of the database. Uh, once you import it actually or add it to your libraries, this one, I assume that we will get rid of it. Now let's run. Okay. Take a little bit of time because this is like, uh, yeah, checking for variable available tables. Now, no available tables. Student table has been created. So now this one is created. It's done. How do I know it's created? I'll show you in a while. However, it's created for sure. Otherwise, it would have given me an error. Okay, exception. That means all these statements are executed and it's created. So uh, this is the first step. Now, let me just highlight again. If you get stuck with the execution the way I just showed, showed a few uh, seconds ago, you need to add the library. So right click, add library. And for this library, by default, you must have this uh, Java da database driver added. Uh, you may have any other, actually, uh, other uh, protocols used for Java database connectivity. Um, but since we are just, um, I mean, creating a simple program for database, not a very professional one, it's just a beginning elementary one, then use Java database driver for this case and we'll uh, you will see these coming here, Java database driver. You will see all of them coming. Once done, then you can run and it will be executing like this. So this is the first part. I'll create another session for the second part and then I'll explain to you how to confirm that this one is already available in your uh, system. That means it's already created. Okay, so hold on until the next session and goodbye.